Welcome back to Imperfect, the Heart-Centered Leadership Podcast. And yes, you're seeing me today. And I had to reach out to this amazing heart-centered leader on LinkedIn. And I've got Dr. Charlie Cartwright with me live this morning. You know him as the dot dash cam doc. So Dr. Charlie, you're the first video on Imperfect. This is awesome. This is awesome. I'm really um, excited to be here today and looking looking forward to this episode. Well, I have been following you and I love how you just get into your car, turn on your dash cam and the leadership wisdom and just all the little nuggets you've been teaching us. It's such a breath of fresh air and I seem to have kept, caught them right after you've done them. So I just think it's a great idea. I think you're onto something and I hope there's going to be many more uh, dash cam videos to come. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. I, I, uh, I really appreciate that. And it's, it's exciting to see it really mm -hmm. resonating with people and from humble beginnings. Absolutely. And, and you know what I loved about this morning is we're having an imperfect video conference here, interview. We wanted to get this done in the car, but technology just doesn't always agree. So we came up with a solution and now we got a nice view of your backyard. So yeah. here's to adaptability, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I wanna just read a little bit of a bio. Um, I, we could spend the whole 30 minutes. I could just talk about everything that you've done, but I just would like to read and, and give our, our viewers a little bit of background about you. You are one of the foremost experts on leadership, employee engagement and workplace safety in the country. I know that you are the cre creator of People Success Formula. And I know that that comes from decades of meta-analysis and all kinds of science terms that I'd love to talk to you about. But I know that you use this modality to really work with leaders. And that'll be in my questioning in a few minutes. And I think what you kind of exemplify that makes you unique as a coach is you take the combination of science plus your education plus your real life experience. And that's what really resonated with me because as a fellow executive coach and, and podcaster like you, I think education is important, but I think having the reliability of the data and the science and then adding in our experience, that is priceless because it's what we've learned and what thought process we've brought into that. So I, I've got a few leadership questions for you if you're ready. I am ready. Okay. My first question is around the people success formula. I would love to know how you developed and unveiled that and how you're using that formula to really foster leadership in the coaching and consulting that you're doing. It's a great question. So my background, 10, 10 years UPS, 10 years FedEx, and then I worked for one of the largest insurance brokerage firms in the world, and I had success at all levels. And I've always been a student of leadership. And so I really wanted to know, well, why was I successful? You know, was I getting lucky? Or was there some things that I'm doing that, hey, these are the right things to do? And then also, are there some things I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing? I need to stop. Then are there some things that I don't know about that I should start doing? So that was kind of the, where I really dove into this research. And in my research, I found that, you know, medical field, insurance industry, university, military, uh, aviation, construction, they all have research around leadership, employee engagement, all these aspects but these different industries don't speak to one another about their research. So I got the idea, what if I looked at all this research, lumped it together and really distilled the picture path that it painted. And when I did that, it became very clear. And those are the 10 principles that make up the people's success formula rooted in science and their principles. And when you apply principles correctly, they work. <laughs> and so when it comes to really influencing people and individuals the right way, I love the science of it. And then, of course, bringing in my education and experience in the workplace coalesced into the people success formula. 
And you know what I love the most about this is I cannot even imagine the people skills that you honed so well working for UPS and FedEx. You, you would have ventured into every sector that there is and the amount of people and different personalities and situations that you had to deal with. And I'm sure it's contributed and fostered to your leadership. A hundred percent. And I always tell people that working in the transportation industry, it's kind of like the wind chill factor. You know how you're outdoors and the temperature might be 30 degrees Fahrenheit, but with the wind chill, it's negative 20. It was kind of like that with transportation because of the hours. So, you know, you're looking at 16 hour days are pretty standard. So in 20 years, you're really getting about 40 years of experience in a pressurized high expectation environment. So that is just priceless when it comes to the amount of experience and real world knowledge in corporate America that I gained in that time. I think if we all kind of even look back at our previous work experience, or I know my first job was that as a server. I don't think you can become a better listener or work on your memory or your executive functioning skills patience, exercising the virtue of patience, customer service. I think all of those really impact us at a young age. And I think we evolve that skill set depending on the environment and the people we're exposed to. So just interesting. See, fun fact about you, I didn't know. Okay, my favorite question to all my leaders, what imperfections do you bring to your heart-centered leadership? Wow, that's a... I bring a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you, that's usually the consensus answer. So I bring, a, I bring a lot of them. And what I found is, you know, your biggest strengths are also your biggest weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And you really have to understand that fine line. And I, I'm a people first guy. And so I'm always going to err on the side of my people or on the side of my client or my customer, always. And uh, that's benefit of the doubt and those kind of things. I'm never gonna put myself in front. However, <clears throat> as a leader, when it comes to self-care, I'm talking about your mental health and your physical health, you have to put yourself first in those things mm -hmm. so that you're able to have the energy to share because no one can pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. So that's that that balance there where you have to make sure that you're nurturing yourself mentally and physically, spiritually, all those things so that when you come to work, then you have a lot to share and offer. So that would be the biggest uh, imperfection. And then the second to that would be perfectionism, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it was Vince Lombardi that said that he really was interested in uh, relentlessly uh, you know, chasing perfection, knowing full well that it's not attainable. But he said, if you chase perfection, you'll catch excellence. So those are the two things I would say. Well, and I love that. And I think we all stumble and, and have frequent visitations, if you will, from perfectionism, but being, a, being able to recognize it in the moment and kind of catch our behavior and have that resolution. The other big thing is self-care. You're talking my language. That's a big found out foundational piece to my brand and really became the center of all that I do as well, because I used to work with executives who were sick in the job. And you're right. You can't lead and have the vision or the non-thriving mindset that the cup's half empty. So what an evolution for you. Absolutely. And, and I know that because I experienced the empty cup and you just, you're done. You have nothing left and, and it's really, a, now you're at a point where you need to recover to, Absolutely. to go yeah. on. So that was something I learned, learned that lesson the hard way. Well, and now you're paying it forward by teaching others, coaching others and, and if you can save someone else from going through a similar experience, that's a transformation on both, both sides of the equation, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, third question. You are specialized in health and safety in the workplace. I would love to share with our viewers where that interest came from and 
what gets you fired up about health and safety? And my hint is absolute zero. Yeah. So I, I really, it's interesting that in transportation with UPS and FedEx, safety is at the top, mm -hmm. right? It's at the top. It doesn't matter if we are delivering packages on time, if we're not doing it safely, keeping mm -hmm. the public safety, and keeping our people safety. So it really was embedded in my DNA at an early age. And then when I became a senior manager and now I'm responsible for, you know, 250 people every day and the public at large that we serve, then that responsibility is really weighty as all those vehicles come out, leave the facility because I'm not driving any of them. And so it's up to my leadership and the training to put people in a position to be successful. So I wanted everyone in the general public that we were serving to go home to their family at night safely. And I want all of my people to go home at night safely. And it sounds like something that is simple, but it's not, but it's so important because when, when fathers and mothers and sons and daughters don't come home at night ever again, it shatters families. And I just don't want that for anyone. So I just made it part of my mission to do everything within my power to make sure that I send as many people home safely as possible. And so that's one of the, the things that, uh, I think in my transportation career, I'm most proud of is that I think the worst injury one of my people had was maybe three or four stitches in their knee. They tripped on a pallet and that was the worst injury. So really proud of the safety record that I had. Oh, you should be. And just the heart centered leadership of you, you know, sharing your values, your belief, and just the proudness of that absolute zero program. And there's nothing more rewarding in health and safety. There, there are going to be bumps along the way, but even though you had an injury, it was something minor, but just the humility and integrity that you exude in that, I can, I can sense and see your passion. So congratulations on that, because that's not an easy feat to do. And I, I've worked in that, that sector, so well done. Thank you. And there's a quote, I really love this quote, Sir Edmund Hillary credit with being the first person to summit Mount Everest. And he said, the impossible can always be broken down into possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that quote alone, I don't care how big the challenge is, we break it down into possibilities and then start knocking down possibilities one at a time, you achieve the impossible. That's the blueprint. That's the blueprint and it's all in the way that we choose to, like you said, look at it and there's always a resolution and a, resol a resolution leads you to a solution. So good advice. Yeah. Okay. My last question is name someone who you hold in high regard and tell us why and did they become a mentor for you? It's interesting. And so there was a, a regional manager at FedEx, his name was Tyler, 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 Tyler Tatum. And I, I'm not sure which company he's with now. Uh, he left FedEx, he had a father that had ill health in Wisconsin, so he took a job to be closer with his father, which that's the kind of leader this guy is. And so he's a regional manager. And so I remember running the sort at the time, when inbound sort at the time when he's a regional manager at FedEx, and I took that sword over. We were bottom 10 in the country, not, not bottom 10%, bottom 10, which is not good when there's over 500 facilities. Okay. And so when you're in the bottom 10 at the time, your, your, your facility would end, on, end up on a report on Fred Smith's desk, who's the founder of FedEx in a, on a morning daily basis, which isn't good. So we were able to really get in there and turn that around. And, and we got up all the way to number two in the nation. And I remember one time he called me up because I had worked my people like 18 hours, something crazy on a Saturday to get something done. And I mean, he really lit me up. And so I felt bad. And then the very next week, I come into the office and I have a handwritten note from him in my box. And I was like, oh my God, what happened now? And it was thanking me for my leadership with the March of Dimes campaign. 
and that I was there and leading the team and, you know, it went on. And this, this, this balance he had was, was amazing that, you know, he, he would get after you, but he would also pick you up and dust you off and mm-hmm. make you feel like you could conquer the world. And I remember that before he had arrived, I've been, I've been doing that same thing for nine years. And no one had ever acknowledged it. And then he comes in, the first thing he does is say, hey, great leadership, thank you. Because I felt like we asked our people to participate. We need to be out in front. And uh, that was really cool. So there are so many lessons that he taught me there. And uh, it, was, it was amazing. One other quick story about him. Before he was the regional manager, he was the assistant hub manager. And I remember going into his office one day, there was something he had made a comment to one of my bosses that I didn't like about we were doing something he didn't. So he didn't talk to me, he talked to my boss. I remember storming into his office. He's standing at his desk and I'm standing over him and I'm pointing my finger, you know, and I slammed the door on my way out. And so then all of a sudden, two years later, he's a region manager. I'm like, oh, this isn't going to be good. <laughs> and I remember asking him about that. And he says, hey, I have no, he said, I don't hold grudges. And he says, you were standing up for your people. And he said, I respect that. Mm. So no problem. I was shocked. And so he taught me so many lessons that I still lean on to this day. So that's, that's leadership at its best, mentorship at its best. And he's been successful at every step of his career for a reason. Well, and just allowing that openness and vulnerability, there's no leader out there that's perfect. No. And like you said, you, you, you saw his leadership, you saw his mentorship, and as much as he would light you up, as you say, or make you be accountable and use it as a learning opportunity, he also picked you up and dusted you off and then, you know, commented and congratulated you on a service project that you did in the community. So it's all about integration and that's how we grow as leaders and we grow every day. You can have lots of roles and responsibilities and a fancy title and lots of initials after your name. But at the end of the day, we're still evolving as human beings and heart centered leadership has to have a place. It's time to take what I call the Teflon of armor. Let's, let's reduce that wall of resistance and show our people that we're human, just like them. 100%. That's a great story. (laughs) I think that's a future dash com episode. I'm seeing that in your future. I think, I think you need to tell that story in, in chapters. So I'm going to switch now to the fab four. These are just four fun questions, whatever's sitting on the top of your mind. Are you ready? I am. What leadership term would you give to this year, 2020? Broken. 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 If you could have dinner with anyone in the world, they could be living or deceased, who would it be and why? Man, there's been so many greats, so many greats. Uh, I think it would be Bruce Lee. And because, you know, philosophically, he created something. He went against the grain. He created something so unique. And, you know, he's the father of mixed martial arts. And that's huge today. And there's just so many... You can't talk to any martial artist that has not been influenced by Bruce Lee. And so he is influence is transcendent and he was just getting started, you know, cut short. And so I would just love to sit down and have a conversation with him because philosophically he had discovered some amazing things and just to understand his mindset and how he achieved what he did at that time in our history. Yeah, definitely a legend for sure. Number three, where is your favorite place on earth? From a business standpoint, (laughs) from a business standpoint, uh, I would say my office. And the reason why is because I've set it up in such a way that I walk in and I feel creative in there and I feel efficient and effective 
and I feel motivated and I have tools all around me to create great things and to do great things. And so that from a business standpoint, that would be my favorite place in the world. Well, and when we have an environment that's conducive and flowing, we have nothing but a mind of clarity and limitless opportunities, right? So Absolutely. that's a very interesting answer. I didn't expect that. <laughs> and my last question is, what do you want your legacy to be? You know, it's pretty simple. That on my tombstone, you know, have my name, it'll have, 1964 to hopefully 100 years after that. <clears throat> That's my goal, whatever that 100 year mark is. And simply stated, he made a difference. I wanna make a difference. Well, I think you are making a difference and I have enjoyed our connection on LinkedIn. I was delighted you wanted to be on my podcast. I'm loving the dash cam videos. So please keep those up. I often give myself a pause in the middle of the day if I see that you're on and you've posted one. And I always take it as a time out to learn from a fellow leader who's heart-centered and an executive coach. So this is my pat on the back virtually to say, keep going because even if you think it's hard and you're not making a difference, you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I always end my podcast with my list of five things that I think really allow us to be purposeful. Follow your heart, have passion, do your best, know your truth, and always be in love with the journey. So this is Deb Crow. Thanks for joining me and Dr. Charlie today, also known as Dashcam Doc on Imperfect, the Heart-Centered Leadership Podcast.